Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video uh, to help out a customer of mine with some um, techniques on how to emboss on the wood. Um, so here I've just got a word made out of 3mm MDF um, and you will also need a Versamark or some other type of watermark uh, stamp pad and then some embossing powders and you can get a million different brands from a million different companies. Um, some have like a iridescence in them. Uh, this one's from Lindy Stamp Gang. Um, this has like, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it's got like a green um, sort of mica pigment, pigment through it. Um, and then you can get thick ones, um, like this one here, which is an Opal's brand. So if you look at this one, it's quite coarse. Sorry, i just zoom that out a little bit. Oops. So the grains of this one are quite coarse, um, whereas something like the Lindy Stamp Gang one, or this one here, which is just a basic white embossing powder, which I've put in a different container just to make it easier for me to use. This one has a very fine powdery consistency, almost like very fine sand. Um, so I'll show you this one first. Um, so all you need to do is take your woodward, uh, pressing it down onto the stamp pad upside down or you know the right side the what the side that you want to show needs to be coated in um, the Versamark I don't know if you'll see it on there it's just got like a fine layer of the um, the, the watermark ink my Versapad is very very well used usually if I'm using something like white I actually have or white or clear I have this one here which is nice and clean so I don't get cross contamination of colours because I've actually just put a little bit of red glitter on there I don't know if you'll see that but anyway so then you get your embossing powder and you can actually just stamp it down into the embossing powder um, but I'm not sure that this word will fit oh yeah it will so I'm just going to pop that in there um, if it's too long I just use this little spoon um, and then I would sprinkle it over with the spoon like this so tap off any excess and you'll see it's got a coverage on there um, not sure if it will show I'll try and get this to focus but it's quite a um, sort of like a sandy finish at the moment um, and you can still see little tiny bits of the wood showing through it um, then you need a heat tool or heat gun um, this is going to be a bit loud so I apologize for the noise and you're basically just melting the embossing powder onto the word so you'll see it start to change and form a liquid So once you've done that, it takes a few seconds to dry completely and you can see this one's not 100% covered. Um, there's a few little blemishes. If I can get the camera to focus. If I hold that up maybe, you can see it's not quite smooth in there. So I give it just a few seconds to cool. Um, I add another layer of the Versamark. And another layer of the embossing powder. Tapping off the excess. Make sure you move your embossing powder before you blast it with your heat gun. And then just go over it again with the heat gun.
and then allow it a couple of seconds to dry and then that's ready to be used on any project you've got a nice smooth glossy finish on there um, if you did get a fingerprint in it so you can see in there I've just smudged it all and made it all um, like a big fingerprint in there I'm not sure if that's even showing up on the camera um, but if you do get a blemish or a mark on it like that you can just go back in with the heat gun re-melt the embossing enamel and then it goes back to nice and smooth finish again um, and then you probably need to leave that I don't know maybe for a minute like you could use it now but if you wanted to press into it with your fingers um, so if you were gluing on the back and then pushing it onto a project it would possibly get fingerprints in it but if if you were doing you know two or three words by the time you've done the third word this one is ready to go like this is nice and cool now um, you can also with the embossing use it for um, like if I had a clear embossing powder so let's just say I wanted to make this um, you could use black embossing powder but just for this particular exercise I'm just going to do it this way so I've colored this with a black permanent marker straight over the top so nothing fancy about that just straight over the top with a black marker um, if I was using this in a project I'd probably go over that twice just to give it a real you know solid black color but for this instance it's fine um, then you can get some there's you can get clear embossing powder or you can get the ultra thick so that's clear it's, they call it UT which is ultra thick embossing enamel um, and then it's the same principle so into the Versamark make sure you get a nice coverage of everything there and then into the ultra thick embossing enamel push it down to get a good coat tap off the excess So it's sort of got a sandy finish and you can see it's very uneven like there's bits that are missed there but when I do my second coat I normally do two coats um, it'll pick it up with the second coat you can actually whilst this this is still hot dunk it straight back into the um, embossing powder and it will pick up another layer um, if you're too slow and you know don't get it done quick enough you can just put the verse mark on and do a second layer So that first coat's melted there, um, but you can see it's a little bit bubbly and blemishy on, and it's not very smooth finish. Um, so back onto the Versamark, or I prefer the Versamark, you might want to just stick it straight back in while it's hot, straight back into the powder. Another coat, straight back into the ultra thick embossing enamel. Tapping off the excess again. And again if you get fingerprints or whatever in it you can just go back and reheat it but you can see with that second coat that's got almost like a glass like finish now all smooth and you know perfectly covered and that's ready to go onto a project um, you know allow it to cool so you don't get finger fingerprints in it but it's pretty much ready to go straight away um, so that's that then if you wanted to with that one um, you could actually just go ahead um, say I wanted it glittery for some reason 
Um, I've got just some stickles here, which is like glitter glue. Um, and then I, I just attach, add a little bit. Just dab a little bit on each letter like that. And then I just tap it on with my finger so that it's getting coverage everywhere. And then you've got a glittered finish if you want to. You can also mix um, glitter with your ultra thick embossing powder um, and create your own glittery embossing powder. Um, so for example this one here is just um, glitter and the ultra thick embossing powder. So when I apply that to a piece, I'll just use something small. use this button here um, if I wanted a really deep red I would color it with a red texture first so I might just do that I'll do it with half so you can see the difference so straight over with red permanent marker <clears throat> straight onto the first mark getting a good coat and And I just sprinkle the embossing powder over the top with the glitter on. Give it a bit of a press down. Tap off the excess. Put the wrist back in the jar. Hate gum. And then you get that sort of finish. So this side here did not have the red pen underneath and this side did so you can you can tell the difference but if I went over that with a second coat you'd probably never even know and the good thing about using the glitter in the embossing enamel is once that's dry and um, you've you've set it with the heat gun that glitter is not going to fall off so if you want to use this on a birthday cake decoration or Christmas tree or something and you didn't want all the glitter falling off um, once that's dry, that glitter will not rub off onto anything. It's embedded into the uh, UD. Anyway, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for you to do your colouring. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again next time. See ya.